Um, let's have our regular Thursday morning counselling session. Uh, you weren't a happy chap the other night. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, as the song goes. Um, we, uh, you know, we've, we've let ourselves down, we've let the sports down really as well, in the fact that we haven't, we haven't applied ourselves as well as what we could have done to situations where, where which were very much in our control to win games. Um, with the with the Cambridge game and the Doncaster game, no disrespect to them two teams, but on on them both given days, the team we put out were better than their team. But it, you know, and the 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 stats will tell you that. But the definition of better than someone is is beating them. And so on both occasions they beat us, so they were better than us. And we we have to put it down as missed opportunities, um, you know. And could give Cambridge the due. They backed it up with a great win against Plymouth. Um, and you know, speaking to Gary after the game, I hope they go on and and, and back up the win against us and and, and manage to get out of the the predicament there at the moment. We feel. We still feel as though we could be drawn into that, so we don't want to get involved in that. And we've got to try and get our heads down and win as many games as we can. But it's interesting when you speak to other managers and you know you get a, a perspective on the game. And you know we all go through very, very similar problems, but also very different problems. And that's the manager's lot. That's how you have to um, you have to you have to overcome what difficulties you've got with what you've got. And. Um, I'd never be down being a football manager because you know it's a great job to be in. You mentioned your supporters there. Here, perhaps unlike at some other clubs, you'll know some of those travelling fans personally. You'll have had a pint with them over the years and, and socialised with them. It's not a big away following, but when you're not winning games away from home, are you acutely aware of their sort of sacrifice to be there? 100%, yeah. You know, and they, they, It's costing them money as well. It's costing them their time, which, you know, it's... You know, time's very, a very valuable commodity. Um, and, you know, I, I say before, I'm, I'm not going to get down as a football manager. Of course, you have times when you get down and you feel down, but you never stay down. And, you know, my personality wouldn't allow that anyway, I don't think. Um, but I've also been able to educate me, me, me thinking process now, so I don't dwell on, on negatives at times, but look for positives. And one of the positives is that we do bring great away following not, maybe not in numbers but definitely in spirit and you know I can I can feel what they're feeling I can feel the pain that they're feeling and I think that they know you can't can't really so, some fans you know just get guided by the results um, so they'll cheer you when you win and they'll boo you when you lose uh, and that's not always the case for me for, you know I, I'm very much a student of form or how we play and I think for the first time in the first half probably this season maybe take the Burton game as well I'd say we went in on another half time after pretty much dominating the, the first half I know they sporadically they had they had chances and their team got applauded off the pitch and I was absolutely livid with my team because I don't think we we showed enough spirit. I just don't. I think we was we were off the pace of the game. We ambled through the game, and I don't want our Savile supporters to see that they've not been used to that in all the years we've been here. Myself and Jimmy, and John, Chad, and Andy to the later stages. They've not been used to that. They've, they've been used to teams who've been playing full throttle. Um, um, you know for for the 90 minutes of most games. And so it's noticeable when it drops off. And, you know, you hear all about this, you know, a couple of foreign managers coming over and this high press and everyone's made up with it. And you'd like to think we've been doing that for years, but uh, at a lower level. And so when you drop off that, uh, I think it's noticeable. It's not definitely noticeable to the staff. So, you know, we were very upset at half time and, the, 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 the bizarre thing is you could see it happening, you know, it's like 
it's like a bad dream and we've got to overcome that and the only way you overcome that is by being positive by working hard on what you do and getting the way you play nailed uh, i like to say on point but that's pretty much a, a young person's term isn't it but we've got to get the way we play we've got to get our energy levels up we've got to We've got to play with an enthusiasm that befits being a professional footballer and representing that to Stanley. And we'll do our best to get our players playing like that on Saturday. I've spoken to a couple of managers about the feel of a game, being able to kind of feel whether it's right or wrong. I know you've referenced statistics a couple of times after games recently. In the moment, or even before the game starts, do you sometimes get the feeling that this is a good day or this is a bad day? I can't get that. I got a feeling that I'm behind that. So, um, I think sometimes you do get a feeling that it's going to be your day. Um, and then you get that feeling during the game when certain things happen. But it's our job to get our players up fire and, and in optimum condition every single time we play. Um, and sometimes it's just that maybe. Yeah, you're second guessing yourself on your personnel, whether you've picked the right team, um, whether you've picked the right formation. But ultimately, you know, you you do what you believe is right to win any game at any given time. And you know, we are quite decisive in what we do. We we're quite clear in on how we play. And I think we just gotta get back to playing the way I know we can play, which is high energy. Passing the ball when we can, going long when we can, being physical when we when we have to, being skillful when we have to, and getting our shots off on more on target and being more clinical on scoring goals, and keeping them out at the other end. And we've done that plenty of times this season. And we, I've said all along, we don't fear anyone in the league. We feel we can compete with any team in the league. Um, but as it was proven on on Tuesday, you know. The league is very, very tight in the fact that any team can, can beat anyone. You're back home. I think you're up to seven games unbeaten at home now. How much of an impact does that have on confidence? Well, we have played well at home um, this season. I think the pitch has helped us. Getting to know the way the pitch plays as well helps. Um, and our fans at home are, are brilliant. You know, they, they never stop. Singing for the whole for the whole game, and uh, the the lads do respond to that. But there's no given that you're playing at home, so you win. Uh, every game we play, we've got to be at our best, and you know I don't think we've been at our best the last two games. In parts we have, we've been good in parts, but yeah, it's no game isn't played in just parts. You know, it's it's the whole shebang, and we've got to get that right. And, you know, in recent times, we I think on Saturday we need a Tony McCoy lad. We need a, you know, full throttle. Wickham this weekend. You start the season at Wickham, which seems like a long time ago and no time at all. To, no time at all ago. Um, they've been contending up there, but I guess it shows what you were saying about this league that they've gone a few games without winning themselves now. Well, you know, it was a, it was a bizarre game that uh, the Wickham game. We just didn't start the game right. I just, I never felt comfortable in the game. Uh, and I didn't think that reflected the way, the way we wanted to start the season. Uh, and we give it a ridiculous goal away. Uh, and then he's chasing the game after. Um, and we know what we're going to get from Wickham. And, you know, people are, people are acquainting us. Our style of play now, every manager that you read there, the pre-match notes. They reference the same physical. Um, so I think just we as people are big the, the, the same physical if we've got big players in the team. Johnny Russell scored the one last night, I think, for Rudersfield. He played for us last year. We didn't get equated as a physical team last year as much. Um and people will use that. I don't I don't know why. You know, but we had to we had to compete more in the air over the last couple of years and we have we've addressed that problem. Um but you know what 
I'm full of admiration for the way Gareth's gone about his business, you know, getting Reckon Promoter was an unbelievable achievement. Could feel really hard done by them going down, to be fair, last season. I don't think that was that was justified. Uh, and he continues to do a good job there. And people will, will point to a style of football. You know, the only people the only thing that people are interested in, in football is winning games and he does it on a regular basis. So. You know, it'd be a good game, and I, I, I like him as a as a guy. Anyway, you know, he's a he's a great fella, and you know, it'd be great to see him again and you know, cross swords with him and have a have a we have a um, we have a kind of John Smith better waiting for him in the, in the office. Um, you've kind of been in this situation yourself, I guess, where football fashion doesn't necessarily fit with with what you're associated with. Are you surprised that Gareth Ainsworth isn't talked about more? as a kind of up-and-coming manager, linked with jobs, Championship, even Premier League? Well, I think he is. He is linked with the with the Championship jobs, possibly not the Premiership. Um, but he is, and, I th- and he is an up-and-coming manager. And I, you know, Gareth's already had a great career, you know, both in football and a manager, and it'll only get better, in my opinion. Um, he's very, very down-to-earth, very level-headed. Um, and he's one of the proper football people, in my opinion, anyway, so... Uh, and he deserves all the plaudits he gets. I guess, I mean, you, you're associated with a club because you've been there for a long time and, and had success with them. And people, therefore, think about you as the manager of that club, maybe, rather than going somewhere else. Yeah, he might become the Gambalo of Wickham. <laughs> had to be done, didn't it? <laughs> um, Personnel-wise, Ross Sykes, back from his suspension. That can only be good news, I guess. It is, and you know, the one thing Ross does give us is an unbelievable spirit in the way he plays the game. He's so desperate to do well, he's so desperate to win. Um, sometimes that maybe spills over in the wrong, the wrong way, but you'd soon have that. His, his desire is unbelievable, and it'd be great to have him 